everyone and thank you for joining us today for the second part of the Ricketts Utility Arch video. As you recall, we have talked about the initial activation of the arch wire by introducing the tippet band in the molar region and about the fact that this tippet band and the moment of couple which is produced in the molar region also produces the pair of vertical forces on both the incisors and the molars. We have also touched upon the moment of couple that is introduced in the incisor region and the effect, effects it brings on both the molar and the incisor intrusion and extrusion forces. The purpose of this video is to talk about the cinchback band and about the summary of all the activations of the utility arch wire to prevent some unwanted effects and the activations that are necessary to avoid effects in different planes of space. So let's talk again about what happens in the incisor region with the engagement of the wire into incisor bracket. So what we have with the initial activation of the arch wire is that we have an extrusion force on the molar and we have an intrusion force on the incisor. And uh, the way it works is that the intrusion force is applied a little bit facial to the center of resistance of the incisors, so it produces the moment of force in the incisor region. The way the moment of force acts is that it tends to tip the crowns of incisors facially. So when we introduce the moment of couple in, on the incisors, the moment of couple introduce, is introduced by engagement of the arch wire into the incisor bracket. So what it does is that it can either aggravate that intrusion force, it can either multiply it or it can decrease it. It depends on what torquing activation we put in that wire. So if you if you remember, uh, we can put, put the torquing on the incisor region in two different ways. So we can either torque the arch wire so that the, it will add the crown lingual torque and the root facial torque. So what it does, it will increase the intrusion force on the incisor and it will additionally increase the extrusion force on the molar. The other way we can activate the uh, arch wire in the incisor region is that we can put the facial crown torque on the incisors and the lingual root torque. The way it works is that it will decrease the amount of intrusion force on the incisors and the same way it will decrease the amount of extrusion on the molars. So when we talk about the multiplication of vertical forces on both the incisors and the molars, how it works. So what do we have? We have the extrusion on the molar, we have the intrusion on the incisor and the increased amount of intrusion force is caused by the lingual crown torque. If we imagine the lingual crown torque in the incisor region, it will potentially increase the overbite. So by increasing the intrusion force, we will additionally increase the overbite, which is something that we don't want. This is an unwanted effect. So increasing the amount of intrusion force will actually put us in a condition that we, we don't want the increase of the overbite. So what we can do is we can decrease the amount of intrusion force by introducing a, an opposite thing, the facial crown torque. This will incline the incisors facially, this will decrease the amount of intrusion force, and this will decrease the overbite, which is the most desirable effect in intrusion mechanics. One of the ways the distal crown tip of the molar can be avoided is that we can cinch the arch wire distally to the molar. What it produces, it produces and it prevents the molar from tipping distally. So we don't have that unwanted molar crown distal tip. But what happens is that the root still tends to tip lingually. So the molar uh, is staying in the same position, is staying in the same place, but it is rotating around its center of resistance. And not rotating, but the center of resistance is actually displaced a little bit in an upward and mesial direction. So that prevention of molar tip back causes the translation of that force, of that restricted tipping force towards the incisor region. So it additionally causes the lingual crown tip in the incisors. And what it does, it does not cause the facial crown tip, which is introduced by the moment of force, the intrusive force, but it causes the incisor 
center of resistance to be further displayed in a more downward and lingual direction. In order to prevent all these unwanted effects, the tight back can be introduced. Let's sum up all the activations of the rickets utility arch that need to be introduced initially and to prevent unwanted effects. So the first one and the initial is the tip back bend that is needed to produce the actual force of intrusion and the production of the vertical forces on, in the molar region. So this is the tip back bend. The tip back bend uh, is the V bend, is the asymmetrical bend which is positioned mesially to the molar uh, tube. The second activation is actually the engagement of the arch wire into the incisor bracket, which can further be designed either to aggravate that uh, intrusion force or to diminish it. So when we're talking about the intrusion force, we have to initially think if we need to increase the intrusion force or if we need to decrease it and produce a further facial crown tip. So the second activation will be either the facial crown torque of the incisors to increase the torquing of the arch wire engaged in the, in the incisor bracket or is it a a lingual crown torque in the incisor regions. The third one that we have already talked about is the cinching back of the arch wire. So what it does, it prevents uh, the excessive facial crown torque, but still with that activation of the torquing of the arch wire in the incisor bracket, it just decreases the amount of intrusive force, which prevents from root resorption or any unwanted effects. And what it does, it, it prevents from excessive lingual crown torque in the incisor region. Let's go back. So if we don't want that excessive crown uh, lingual root torque and the mesial root tip and the molar that we, we just mentioned, is that we can introduce the tip, uh, the tight back in the molar region, which will just hold the incisors and the molars in that, in, in that same stable position. I want to bring you to a different uh, plane of space and I want to talk from the coronal view and if we look at the at both molars in the coronal view is what we have is that the center of resistance of the molars is positioned uh, in the area of the mesial root and somewhere at the level of the bifurcation of the roots. So if we imagine the buccal tubes is that when the force, the extrusive force uh, goes passes through the through the buccal tube and it lies a little bit facially from the center of resistance is that it causes the molar to tip lingually so this is the unwanted effect of that activation and in order to prevent that we need that molar to uh, to tip buccally the crown to tip buccally this is something we can do uh, by introducing the facial crown torque in that part of the arch wire that is engaged into the molar tube. So let's look at the molar from the occlu occlusal table. And if we imagine that this is occlusal table, this is this is the mesial, the distal, and the, the, uh, and the three cusps of the molar, and these are the two lingual cusps of the lower molar, we can imagine that the center of resistance is located a little bit more towards the mesial root, and that when the force is applied at the area of the buccal tube, it tends to go, it tends to direct and to pass from the point of force application towards the center of resistance. So what it will do, if, if we imagine that this is the lower right molar, it will tend to rotate this molar distally out. And this distal out rotation should be compensated by bending the intrusion arch the way that the compensation bends in the molar region will be directed 45 degrees towards the lingual. So this is the angle of 45 to prevent that, that molar distal out rotation. This is it for the second part of the Ricketts Utility Arch video. You can always go back and refresh all the information in your memory. And please don't forget to click the subscribe button and like the video. Thank you for watching.